Okay, good morning members. My name is Sally Morris Pritchard and I'm a Committee Services Officer for Conway Council. I can confirm that I've conducted a sound check before the start of the, me uh, before the, start of the meeting so I can assume that everyone can hear me. Can I welcome everyone to today's meeting where we are all attending remotely. In addition to committee members, we also have non-committee members, cabinet members and officers joining us to assist with the discussion. For those viewing the live stream or recording, committee members are identified with an asterisk next to their name. The meeting will be recorded and live streamed and will be available for viewing after the meeting. Should the live streaming fail, the meeting will continue and a recording will be available through the Council's websites following the conclusion of the meeting. Can I remind members that translation facilities are available and to choose your language of choice. If you wish to speak, please use the raise hand function. You can also use the chat facility, but please note that the chair may not be able to monitor the chat facility during the meeting. All microphones will be muted, and if you've indicated your intention to speak, you'll be invited to turn your microphone on. If you leave your device for any reason, can you please ensure you're muted and that you turn your video off? So moving on to the agenda, item one is appointment of chair. Are there any nominations? Can I I'd nominate like to nominate... I'd yeah, like to nominate yeah. Councillor Austin Roberts. Yep, yeah, do we have a seconder? Councillor Chris, yep, yeah, okay. Do we have any other proposals? No other proposals. Can I have a show of hands for that, please? Yep, yeah, no problem. So that's Councillor Austin Roberts. So I will hand over to Austin Roberts as chair. Um Sally, uh Nigel Smith. Um the nominee, the Homer Elke. The Enui Eu a Kinghorid Austin Opitz, a Vid Kadere Puikor Sosolog Graffi Kahik at Noda. Kahel Katan Hybrid, Sudago Puikor with the Kanel Guiriat sign, Kindekhat Kabarbot, the Hidden Kubisha of Paub and Wenghawati. Ofuni Grisavi Paubir Kabarbot had you heard the Migi de Menache Obeth. And a gustal a kelota puikor, makanin heavy de lota, nata dinsen e lota or puikor, e lota or cabinet, a sweet ocion, and a minani e canarsiaki de chavadiza. Bid irhenis and guiller a fruit of view, um, mark manaserenker and waho e lota puikor. Right, a mionisi thatcher agenda. Ar eich am gyntaf y di penodi isgadeirydd o sa rhywun yn barod i nomineiddio ysgol chi. Dda, y dwi am nomineiddio y cynghorydd Nigel Smith. O sa eili ydych hynny ysgol chi dda? Y cynghorydd Sam Cotton diolch yn fawr. Pawb yn hapus? Ia, iawn, ni o'n i mlaen. Iawn felly. Right, Osa um the Hiriata. Yeah, apologies have been received from councillors Carol Beard, Gail Jones, Ivod Lloyd, Bob Squire, and John Roberts. Uh, that's Gan Kishad. Has anybody any declarations? No? Yeah. No. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. I'm not sure if I should declare. Um, like many others, I'm uh, a fit club member uh, of the. So I'm not sure if that is something that we should declare because we do. If there if there is an improvement to the service, then uh, we will benefit. Yeah. Um, I'll go over to um, Ian Abgares. Ian. Yeah, uh, no, that, that that would be an interest that we common to all the people of Conway. So um, I'm more than happy for you to proceed and there's no need to declare an interest on that one. Thank you. Yeah, happy, Chris. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah, good right. Uh, Materia on Breeze, Sally? No, no urgent matters, Chair. Yeah, good morning. Um, come not on a cover of the not all. Come on, do you come not on a cover of the Halloween that at Ayo or Uthved? Dwi fiol daideg ag un, os yna gynigydd ag eilid ysgol eich yna. Diolch yn fawr Chris Hughes a diolch yn fawr cynghorydd Jeff Corey. Um, pawb yn hapus efo hynny, siw hans ysgol eich yna. Iawn, fedra i gadanhau bod hynny bod y cymnodion yna wedi yw. Pasio, um, i ten pump cymnodion cyfarfod anffurfiol cadeirydion ac isgadeirydion y bwygor a trysolwg y... Na, oh sorry, I'm not going to even in. 
Sorry, if you bear me, with me for a minute. The, the wrong notes. Okay, yeah. Mae gynnau'r nodiadau anghywir. So, dwi'n ymddu hero. Iawn, uh, only mlaen. Um, right. To approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 1st of the 12th, 2020. Wedi wneud hwnna, Okay. Right. Eitem saith a'r prif beth yn un drafod heddiw. Sustainability of leisure services. Ac i gyflwyno hwn y ma, y Mali Tudswyl. Good morning, everyone. Okay, I shall begin. Um, obviously, the, the report has been sent through in a pack um, with two appendices. So um, the, the idea this morning is to, to go through this very, very briefly. Um, I've also got a small presentation at the end, which goes into a bit more detail, um, a couple of videos to show you some of the things that we're doing to improve the sustainability of leisure uh, within Conway. So... The, the 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 purpose of the report um there was a, a request for this this report back in february um as a response to the welsh audit office's um examination of leisure services back in 2019 um we were audited uh, quite thoroughly um but obviously then since then we've been in the midst of a pandemic so uh, this report actually highlights uh, the responses to the welsh audit office um uh, coverage of, of leisure provision within Conway and also obviously what we've done in the, over the last 18 months as part of the pandemic. So um, the report, uh, like I said, this dem demonstrates our response um, to Welsh Audit Office and COVID. Um, it highlights the innovative ways that we've um, invested both time and money into the sustainability and the future of leisure within Conway. Um, one of the, the biggest opportunities um, that, that was as found by Welsh Audit Office and by um, APSI, who are the Association of Public Sector Excellence, is that Conway's leisure services is managed in-house. This is a huge opportunity for Conway moving forward. Um, there are major discussions within the industry. Um, I've got an all-Wales leisure officers meeting next week to discuss this. And we are one of only a few within Wales who are managed internally. Um, so that goes back to, um, I suppose, thanking um, you as um, members and officers for the support that you give leisure uh, on a sort of daily, weekly, monthly, annually basis. So um, that's a huge opportunity and bonus for, for us as a service. There's also um, within um, the report, we've tried to highlight the um, commercial opportunities um, that we've been working on throughout the, the last 18 months. Obviously, at the start of the pandemic, our service was 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 closed, as were most services. Um, we've also supported Conway in its drive against the pandemic, supporting other services, and also helping the the NHS to deliver um, key key operations within our facilities um, and using our site to basis. So um, that's that's highlighted within there. Um, looking at um, sort of eighteen months into the pandemic, uh, we're now sort of looking at we're working at um, level zero um, and COVID reassurance is still a key issue for us. It's still a key task. Um, Pre-COVID, um, our Fit Conway membership base, as Chris has mentioned, Councillor Chris mentioned before, was at roughly about 5,000 members. Um, today, currently we're at 3,300 members, which in, this, in the grand scheme of things is, is a good improvement. Um, we've set ourselves a target of 4,000 by the end of this financial year. Um, that itself creates financial pressures um, due to the pre-numbers, um, pre-COVID numbers, because um, that's how our budgets are based on, and memberships are obviously a key point, uh, part of that. Um, we're also, um, in, the, in the report, it looks at strategies. So we're currently working alongside um, culture. Uh, now we're part of um, economy and culture department. We're looking at their um, strategy and linking ours into theirs and theirs into ours. Um, we're currently updating our strategy next year um, and we're also working on the corporate plan engagement next week to find out what uh, our customers and our residents think of our service and the key issues facing, um, facing them and us as part of our delivery of the service. We've um, currently, we're, we're in, involved in a um, socioeconomic review of our service, our pricing structure. I think the um, Socioeconomic duty became law in April. I think we're the first service to, to review fees and charges. Um, so it's quite a lengthy process. We're currently in the, in the uh, 
midst of um, a questionnaire um, being built um, to go to our members, go to our users and non-users to find out what they think about the service, which will also help obviously the, um, the corporate plan engagement um, that we're, we're planning on doing over the next few months. So at this point in time, um, we are obviously engaging quite heavily within our, our service, within our users um, to, to try and find out what the customers think and how they, they've taken to our investments, our innovative ways that we've dealt with um, the um, Welsh Audit Office report and obviously the pandemic. Um, so over the last 18 months, hang on a second. Over the last 18 months, we've gone through quite a lot. Um, and I don't want to, I want to try and keep this quite high level. Um, but in terms of investments in our facilities, we've had a thick Conway rebrand. What you'll find when you you see the videos later on is, is this brand is 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 very, very evident in, in virtually everything that we do. Um, it's association to um, improvements in the service, the, the investments in technology, um, the, the response to COVID. Um, and hopefully this brand will give people confidence that Conway is delivering a fit for purpose service, um, which addresses the, um, the Welsh Audit Office claims um, for, for leisure being sustainable um, under the, the Future Generations Act. Um, we, as a response to COVID, we now have larger gyms and fitness areas um, to allow social distancing. Um, again, going back to COVID reassurance, this is a massive opportunity for us because we're, we're one of only a few um, suppliers of leisure within the, the locality that has large facilities and can deliver this. Um, in terms of being quite innovative over the last 18 months, um, due to capacity issues, we invested um, in hiring a private pool to allow our swimming lessons to continue when they were available to do so when we weren't in lockdown. Um, this, this is a massive um, objective for Conway moving forward. Um, our swimming lessons are currently at about 80% of, of pre-COVID pre um, capacity. So we're, we're on our way there. Um, I think there is a big issue um, of, of swimming lessons and, and, and children being able to swim because there's been 18 months of no swimming. So we're working on that quite, um, quite intensely at the minute. Um, we've invested in virtual fitness studios and online fitness content, which you'll see um, later on in one of the videos. Um, this is key to obviously whilst we're, we're in lockdown. And again, we're, we're, I suppose based on the fuel shortages that, that kind of we're in the midst of at the minute. And we're looking at pushing um, virtual fitness back online to save people having to travel. And these are the kind of responses in terms of being innovative that we, we, now, we now can turn to um, to ensure that that the customers can still access our services. Um, as part of um, a larger digital transformation project, um, we've now created a, a commercially driven website um, and an app for customer sales. And so now our, our members can actually join online rather than going to site. Um, again, there's a couple of videos that will show later that, that, that show this. Um, and and it's, it, it's really been positive in terms of feedback. Uh, people being able to access our service at a touch of a button is so much better than it was previously. We've invested in um, spinning bikes. So we last year we invested about eighty thousand pound in spinning bikes for for every site. They're all branded up. I'll, I'll show you an image of them later. Again, it, it pushes the Conway rebrand. Um, we're also actually investing another fifteen thousand pound as we speak into extra bikes for another for one of our sites because. It, the demand is there. The, the, the response to people getting back to fitness is, is being really, really positive. Um, and obviously we're reacting to that in a, in a, in a timely manner, which is great. Um, one of the biggest ones, um, biggest issues raised by the Welsh Audit Office is investment in repair and maintenance issues and facility developments. So we, we um, have invested or plan to invest 1.2 million this year. Again, this was part of the, the capital bid scheme um, and obviously supported by yourself. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really lucky in that, in that respect because, you know, the facilities need, they need it. And in the report, it said that they're looking tired, which they are. Um, and obviously these improvements, these investments will help us massively to, to, to counteract that claim. Um, we've improved communications. Um, so over the last 18 months, we've employed a part-time digital engagement officer um, through um, marketing and comms team. And we, we have, we're working on a plan for the contact centre development, um, which will allow us to access and answer more um, telephone calls and emails. We're currently doing this as a, a, a small pilot, which starts next week uh, for two weeks on improving the, the, the actual call uh, content. And um, at the minute, we're answering about two and a half thousand to three thousand emails per month. 
So there's, there's a lot of communication going on between ourselves and our customers, which is always good to see. Um, a lot of the feedback is good. Um, we've also restructured our management levels to, to support a commercially driven business model. So um, over the last 18 months, we've employed a fitness development manager um, whose responsibility is, is to look after fitness, which is our biggest income generator. Okay. So the recommendations to the report is that this is, this is, is recommended that um, the report is accepted as a defined response to COVID pandemic and the clear direction to address the Welsh Audit Office report, um, demonstrating how we've been um, innovative um, and obviously we're looking at a clear sustainability plan um, with future investments, um, which I'll go to go through in, in a bit more detail. Um, at that point, um, I'd like to break for um, two minutes to see if there are any questions from any of the, the members so far. And then we'll, I'll move forward um, with a bit more detail on the actual Welsh Audit Office status of where we are with certain things. And then we'll move on to a, a quick short video on okay. presentation. Uh, um, Abdul Khan, Borada, Salam Alaikum. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Mali. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And yes, uh, if you could thank, extend our thanks to your team. You guys have been really excellent throughout. You even tried to put the app for me to go into the gym. Unfortunately, I haven't done so yet. It's just one of them things I'm sure others will relate. Uh, the longer you keep, the long, uh, prolonged, the harder it is to get back into it. But no, but as, as they say, you can take the horses to the water, you can make it drink. Hopefully soon uh, you'll see me. But no, um, everything's um, in the report I have read is, is good. Only small comment is about the rebranding, uh, 14 and a half K uh, to me, uh, for me personally, uh, uh, for the time we're in is bit expensive, I thought, because we're not attracting uh, anybody from outside is within our community. And do we need the branding? Probably we do. We need to move with the time, but it's the costing of it. But other than that, thank you for everything. Thank you, Khadri. Okay, so, Abdul, as a response to that question. So the 14,500 was for the, the rebrand and obviously the, the physical signage. Um, the, the actual funding itself was done um, via the um, Wales um, Leisure and Recovery, uh, Sport and Recovery Grant. So it wasn't actually a cost to Conway. It was funded centrally. Um, you're right, as part of a, a commercial operation, um, we do need to move with the times. And it, obviously, if you can see the background that I've got now on my camera, um, you'll see in the videos that our Fit Conway brand is everything to us. So it needs to be visible um, as far as, far as I was concerned as the, the principal officer for leisure. This was a must to try and standardize everything that we do to make us, uh, uh, I suppose, a trusted brand for the residents of Conway. Thank, thank you. On that note, Chair, I just want to um, propose that we accept the recommendation as well. Thank you, Chair. You muted, Chair. Can you hear Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Just a couple of questions, really. Um, in terms of the running costs of leisure services, are, do you have it? Could are you aware of the, the how much we pay in NNDR for the buildings each year? Um, we are off the top of my head. It's approximately about eight hundred thousand. Um. But I'd have to check with our um, finance people to get the exact number. And has any consideration been given to creating a buildings trust to put the buildings out so that we would save that NNDR? I think we save 80% of it if we were to do that. Which I think would obviously allow potential borrowing and everything to fund to finance the costs of the refurbishment. Yeah, I think we've uh, obviously from from um, predecessors to myself, I know this was looked at at some point. Um, I think that um, obviously the the information that's coming out of 
sort of key leisure sectors is is that especially during the pandemic the best place to be was a local authority owned and managed service um yes there are financial benefits to to go into building trusts but ultimately the the responsibility still lies with the with the authority um a lot of trusts were handing keys back to local authorities um, for leisure centers leisure sites during the pandemic purely because they, they were issues over the, the running costs and, and losses in terms of um, funding, et cetera, through the pandemic. So um, I personally believe we're in the right place, but I'm happy to take a steer from um, you as members and obviously uh, strategic directors um, uh, within the service. Are you happy, Chris? Yep, thanks, Molly. Uh, uh, thanks. Hi, Owen. I'm going to King Horrid, Ian Jenkins, and uh, King Horrid and McCaffrey. Ian. Mr. Caterer, a deal came a lamb a Gavlinet can also for Morna. The Gitanisilu Malay, E. Ganolvan Hamlin, the Frank Honway, Tedanidical Kai, 3G, a Wispon, worthy weld. A pretty a problem of an old course at the Betis Games Castadliol, or Dan, complete House Pedroid Cymru, them Cymru Han. And bod y marciau ar y cae yn anghywir a dyn ydych chi'n colli um, incwm trwy beidio gael well, fedrys y um, clybiau lleol ddim chwarae games gyllydleol ar y cae yma sydd yn bechod ofnadwy a dwi'n gobeithio na rhyw iawn bod bo chi malu wedi cymryd wedi dall y broblem Neu fedr um, y sych chi'n camwyo incwm dwi'n siŵr os y clybiau fel Bro Cerniw, Machno a Clwb fel Llan Rwst yn gallu chwarae gemau hyd nod o dan llifol i'r ata um, yn y geia yma. Um, ond just cadaf hwnna i'ch sylwch chi, dwi'n gwybod beth eich barn chi, Mali. Diolch yn fawr. Mali, would you like to respond? Oh, yes, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Ian. Um, I think from our point of view, the, the facility has always been looked at as a training facility. Um, it's been used, obviously, for it's on a school site, so it gets used by um, the school during the day and by, um, obviously, the community in the evenings and weekends. Um, um, the, I think the, the replacement of that facility, uh, the surface, was was done in conjunction with education services around the, the, the PFI. Um, so I think there's um, there are issues there around how that would, be, would have been funded and how it was viewed as a facility. Um, that said, I'm sure we can go back and have a look, um, see what the issues are uh, around sort of the, the markings and the, the spaces required for, for clubs to play league football um, from there. Because I know we, we uh, other sites, I think at, at Arius, I think Colwyn Bay have played pre-season friendlies, etc. At, at, at that site. So it's something that we are, we are offering to the community. So um, I'll double check that with Alan. The area manager, and we'll, we'll have a chat with education services as well. Diolch uh, Jenkins. Right, Cynghorydd Anne McCaffrey ac yna y Cynghorydd Nigel Smith. Thanks, Chair, um, and thanks, Mali, for, for your report. I think, if I remember rightly, it was myself that sort of proposed that we, we wanted to see what this clear financial model is, is going to be. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to be talking about that um, in the second part of your presentation, because I, I'm not really that clear about what the financial model that, that, that you're proposing, or indeed if, in fact, it's a fact that you're, you're not ready to, to clarify that, that. But I'll, I'll wait till the end of your presentation for that. The question I've got in the, in the meantime is, you've mentioned a socioeconomic survey, um, and obviously this is a new duty on all councils, isn't it? Um, and you talked about um, looking at accessibility, affordability in, in terms of the socioeconomic survey. As you know, very much in the past, I've said it's really important that we talk to the people who are not using us as well as the people who are using us. And, and part of you know, the issue, I think, in terms of people who are not using us is certainly because of costs. But it's not just about the direct costs that, that we apply in terms of, of accessing our facilities. It's about the costs that people have to incur 
to get to wherever they need to be to access the facilities given the, 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 the geography uh, and demography of the county. So I, I, the question really is, you know, what, what are the criteria that you're looking at in terms of socioeconomic survey uh, and specifically around affordability that will inform your strategy around pricing and income, I assume? Thanks, Mally. Thanks, Councillor Anne. Um, so the, the socioeconomic duty questionnaire um, is, is really, really important. Um, it's been structured to, to look at users and non-users. Um, you're right, um, and it, I think it's important that more important that we get the views of the non-users to find out why they're not using us to establish whether cost is actually a, a problem. You know, there's an assumption that it is, um, but I think that, that you, you, you know, you mentioned travel as well, is that I think that... W the, the question in itself is trying to get an indication of, of where people are, because you can have people who are, who are, who are quite who earn quite good salaries, but are still cash poor. Um, and it, it's, it's that kind of, um, those kind of questions that are, are quite difficult to ask the members of the public when potentially they might not want to tell you what their financial economic position is at a particular time. So we're asking um, some quite strong questions. And I think it's important that we do that to find, the, the, actually to establish whether the pricing structure is correct or not. Um, I think obviously once we've got the data from, from those questionnaires, that'll be pulled together, it'll come into a report um, that we'll publish um, for support on um, potential recommendations to, to answer the, the, the information that the public give us. So um, it's a key piece of work for us at the minute. Obviously we're looking at, we're going into budget setting times now over the next few months. So obviously we, we, we're gonna run that quite quickly. Um, we're gonna give ourselves a month to get all the data back in. Um, and then obviously we'll start looking at um, potential changes to be made um, if, if the information tells us that we, um, we've got an issue with our pricing structure. So, so just to be clear, Mally, does that mean that you're only looking at the costs of the gym, the cost of, of a swimming pool, as opposed to the totality of costs that people incur in accessing? Is, is that what you're clarifying now? Yes, um, th there are questions in there about travel, um, how far they travel, um, how they get to us. Um, but the, 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 the main process at the minute is, is to look at price and structure of our facilities. Again, if, they, if they, they then say that there's an issue over the totality of the cost of traveling and it's just it's all too expensive because, you know, you look at how I mentioned before is that, you know, you've got issues with fuel now and the cost of buying fuel has just gone up. So that it, it immediately you have these 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 peaks and troughs where um, cost um, to individuals can can be, be made even worse based on something that we have no control over. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree. People who live on the extremities of the county really are quite disadvantaged by location. So, you know, the more you can extrapolate from the survey that you do around the costs that people incur, or indeed the potential costs that the people who are not coming to us would incur, there are perhaps barriers to access, the better. So I really look forward to seeing the uh, results of the survey. Thanks, Mally. Thank you. Uh, Nigel Smith. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Mally, uh, I just want to congratulate you and your team for what I see as a, as a major transformation of our leisure services. In particular, the rebranding, I think, has been, a, has been a, a, a most excellent thing and at a most reasonable cost. Um, I was listening to the comments of Councillor Chris Hughes, and uh, I urge my fellow members to be very cautious about turning our facilities over to uh, not-for-profit uh, charities as such, because we do have a leisure facility in the east of the county, the Amorva, which is run by a charity. And I have grave concerns, as do uh, my fellow uh, county councillors and town councillors about this, this facility and its management and its long-term sustainability as a charity. Um, just looking forward, you know, obviously we've gone uh, much more corporate minded um, how do you see us um, you know because we're not the only one in the market in the leisure leisure services we have uh, private companies out there how do you see us performing against those those other people that are out there thank you Councillor Nigel well I think from our point of view is um, we have a duty for everyone uh, within the county. So cradles to grave, 
private companies don't really have that burden, um, that, that, that focus on them. Um, we obviously also have fitness. We have swimming. We have team sports. We have um, chronic ill health programs. We have support in the NHS. We do everything. Um, and I think that, that variety allows us to be really focused in, in certain areas. Um, a lot of the stuff that we're doing, um, the investments now around being a bit more commercial will, will take us toe to toe with commercial operators. Um, mm. I think our, our product and our pricing structure following the, the socioeconomic review will offer a, a I suppose a, a private f- um, fitness facility offer for a local authority price, which other people can't match. Um, I think we're, you know, we, we are the experts in our field, you know, the breadth of the, the health and well-being um, strategies that we cover, um, you know, working alongside our colleagues in different authorities, working alongside national government bodies of sport, working alongside the NHS, working alongside social care and education. Um, we do a lot of work behind the scenes that people just don't see, don't understand, don't even know it's happening. Um, but again, it comes across in what we offer in terms of our, our programmes, but ultimately, it comes across in our facilities, and that's why this investment is so key, because longer term, that is part of the sustainability. Uh, the Welsh Audit Office report and the, the subsequent APSI report that's, that's published as a, uh, an appendix to this, it, it, you know, there, there are key statistics in both those reports. More importantly, um, the APSI report, because it's a, resp- it's a response to COVID and, uh, and, and really sort of the, the importance of leisure services moving forward um, and how local authorities need to, to really consider uh, the importance of them internally as well. And that's why I think, you know, from my point of view, it's important to keep us in-house managed. Um, you know, the support we've had from, um, as a service from members, um, from um, local government, um, sort of, you, you know, Welsh government from the, the, the grants that we've had and that we have access to, you know, we, we've got really good links now in, in, in education and social care. You know, when they're looking at grants uh, applications, they're coming to us to see what we can support them with. You know, we, 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 we now definitely are a more corporate service than we were before. Yeah, I would agree. And, uh, you know, I, I think this investment uh, going forward seems very reasonable for the service that you provide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Diolch, Nigel. Um, right, uh, dwi am Catalier Arweinydd uh, Cynghorydd Charles McCubri. Bwra da, Cynghorydd. Diolch, Mr. Cynghorydd. Bwra da, pawb. Um, thanks for letting me speak. I'd also just like to add my congratulations to the team. I think they've done an amazing job on a limited budget. Um, the NHS spends £10 billion on diabetes. 90% of that is type 2, which is an extremely linked with poor diet. Um, we have a really huge rate of heart disease, depression, mental health issues. Lots of cancers are caused by poor diet, poor health. So this should be everybody's problem. It shouldn't just be up to councils to um, do this preventative thing. And as Councillor Anne said, there's people can't necessarily get to the facilities, can't afford the facilities. Funding for grassroots sports has never been more difficult. Um, 15 years ago, you could have gone to... Sports Lottery, Sports Wales, not funding for grassroots, that's all gone. It just doesn't exist anymore. That money is all funneled off to pay our athletes to bring home gold medals so people can sit in their sofa and watch it while not able to access these facilities themselves. And that there needs to be a real realisation at a national level that we're sleepwalking into disaster in terms of all these disease and obesity levels. And we need to be supported more. There needs to be, hands need to be put in, in pockets, get a healthier population and that will save, you know, will happier, healthier people, it'll save money down the line. So it's not just the council's problem. Um, and we need to look at that really, really closely and keep pressing for that. But I really would like to congratulate the team. Um, it's a fantastic thing. And we're all, when we get there to the gym and we, we have a session, you know, what it does for your mental health and how you feel and stuff is fantastic. So having those facilities there is really, really important. So yeah, just thanks to all the team. And thanks for letting me speak, Chair. Diolch, uh, Charlie, a clywch, clywch. Um, iawn, dos gyna i neb ar fy sgrin isio um, siarad. Felly, mae gyna i rhywun wedi uh, cynnig bod ni'n mynd o ar gymhelliad yr adroddiad, os gyna i eilydd ysgol eich yna. I'd like to second that, Chair. Diolch yn fawr, Cyngorydd Nigel Smith. Um, felly, um, medrwch chi ddangos... Chair, chair, ar... chair, can I oh, just sorry. intervene? Ja, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I thought from what Mali had said, there was part two to this presentation. Oh, sorry. Before we get to going yes, to the vote. You are, you are quite say, correct. 
I have to say, I'm not clear on what the financial model that Welsh government has asked us to d- yeah. derive. I mean, I think Charlie sums up very well the status quo and the, the, the importance of, of leisure within that. But, you know, for me, when I requested this report, it was about understanding the clear financial model. And I, I don't see, and maybe it's just me, I, I don't have a handle on that or right. and there's no financials either. So yeah, I'd be concerned if we're going to the vote. Yeah, Ma- Mali? Sorry, my apologies, Anne, you are perfectly correct. Mali did say there was a second part, so please accept my apologies. Mali. Yeah, fine, thank you. Um, I need to share my screen, um, if that's okay. Um, This is quite technical for me, um, so apologies. It it links to sort of YouTube videos of some of the stuff that we've uh, promoted over the last 18 months, and just to go in a bit more detail. So um, apologies, Um, it might jump around a little bit, um, but we will see how we get on. Can everyone see that? Yeah, okay. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, the Fit Conway rebrand was a, a clear uh, mission of ours um, at, at pre- pre-pandemic, um, and it was even a, a, a response um, sort of pre-Welsh Order office. It's something that we'd, we'd seen as, as something that, w- that really needed to happen. Um, so I've, I've kind of asked myself a few questions and, and it's just, so, sorry, my, my answers uh, of these questions will probably, I suppose, tell you why we've invested this money and, and, and actually created the brand. So the questions I've asked myself um, is, is really, what does this new brand development mean for us as a service? So our brand is our identity. It's who we are. It's what we do. Um, our brand is also now linked to service improvements. So from the the, the financial support um, that members um, Conway have given us, we're now starting to invest that into facilities and the public are benefiting from improved programmes, improved equipment and improved facilities. Um, It then makes us a trustworthy brand. Um, We are the experts. Our communication is key to to the public um, and this information can be trusted because our brand is a trustworthy brand. our brand, um, like Charlie said, is, is something that it's our promise to get more people more active more often, um, again, from improved facilities, improved programmes. Um, our brand is evident now, um, as, as Councillor Abdul mentioned, um, it, you know, this, there are signage, it's everywhere in our facilities, it's online, um, it, you'll, you'll see it from the videos, you'll see in a minute, it, 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 our brand is everywhere. Um, um, and it's also prevalent within all of our communications, um, social media, emails, and, and, and web conversations that we have with our customers. You know, our email signatures are all, all linked up to, to Fit Conway, to downloading the, the app, et cetera. So we're, we're pushing our brand um, to the far reaches of, of Conway residents as best as we can. And it gives us an identity that we've never really had before. Um, so that's our brand. And that's what it means to us. Um, so innovative use of technology. So as part of the investment um, and sustainability moving forward, we've invested in technology um, as a response to the Welsh Order Office and obviously to the pandemic. Um, we've now got an app. Um, we've now got a commercial website. We've got online bookings. Um, we've got virtual classes. Uh, we're, we're, we're trialing a contact centre and that's, we've got um, uh, a, a trust source of communication in our Facebook and, and, and other social media accounts. So this is where the technology gets interesting, so bear with me a second. Uh, um, can you see the video? see the screen, Mally. I'm not, nothing's actually playing yet. Right, okay. It will do in a second, boo, isn't it? So we just have to skip the ad. It's supposed to be sound on this, Mally. There should be. Is there not sound? No, nothing's coming over, mate. Oh, 
Apologies. No. Did it come through in the end? Apologies. Yes. Um, okay. So obviously the, the Fit Conway app, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail in a minute, but this is one of the key developments that we've introduced. Um, we've um, now got an opportunity to communicate with our customers um, through the app and um, give them details of programs, um, a touch of a button, um, information, key information around closures. If we have to close facilities, it's all going to be done through the app. Um, it, it's going to revolutionize, or is re already revolutionizing the way that we work with our customers. Um, we'll go on to the Fit Conway website now. So the Fit Conway website is the driver um, to push people to download the app. It's also a driver in terms of membership joins and all the key, key information. Um, all of our programs, um, we've been working on the accessibility pro um, project um, with other, with the web, web team, et cetera. And as part of that, that work, um, we're now making sure that um, all of the information that gets th from our booking system is being pulled through to the website, whereas in the past it was done in tables, lots of issues over accessibility and stuff. So we've been part of that program as well. That, that, that work has gone really well. So I'll just give you a quick tour of, of this. Um, so, bear me a second. So, moving on to online bookings, um, we provided online bookings prior to the pandemic um, as part of the, um, the the normal suite of um, booking opportunities that we give to the customers. Uh, Pre-pandemic, our online bookings were about fifteen percent of just fitness classes were being booked online. We're now currently at eighty-five percent of all of our bookings are now done online. Um, the investment in the technology, the investment in the branding has all led to this opportunity. It needed to be there for, as a response to the pandemic um, to, to, to lower contact within our facilities. But that's continued now with something that, that is now um, embedded in, in the way that people use our service. So um, I'll just show you a, vi a quick video of, of how people would book swimming, um, for example, in, in our facilities. So um, also as, as part of um, the, the response to the pandemic and, and the investment in technology, we've invested in virtual fitness classes. So we've got um, the opportunity where people can come to a site to do a virtual class. So that, that basically means that there's no instructor. It's done as, a, as a, a, a production on a screen that people follow. This also then can be streamed live so people can do it at home. And there's also a, a, a video bank of, of, of workouts that people can access from the comfort of their own home. So this, this investment is, is something that we're quite proud of. We've been working on it for a while. Um, and this is available as, available now at virtually all of our sites. There's only one left to, uh, to, to be invested in that's junction, Tandino Junction. That's part of all the investments that we're working on at the minute.
So previously mentioned the contact centre. Um, that's that's going to be trialled next week for two weeks. Uh, currently answering two and a half, three thousand emails a, a month. Um, there, there's a definite need for us to um, improve our um, telephone um, access requirements in terms of the actual system itself. So we're investing in that. Um, and we're working quite closely with uh, IT telephony, et cetera, to make sure that that is, a, a, is, is something that, that will give us a, a lot of information in terms of the number of calls that we're missing, how, how that's improving with, by the use of a, a contact centre. You know, we're, we're modelling um, our contact centre on what's already happening in ERF. I mean, that's quite a successful model that Conway already operates. Um, so we're, we're following that, that model and obviously the IT model as well. Um, so final part of this, this, this slide is around social media. So our Facebook um, uh, communication is, is really key to, to a lot of the, the, the comms that we're putting out. Um, it's our most successful um, social media outlet at the minute. Um, and one of the things we've done as part of um, our transformation is, is, is try and put more engagement out. The videos you've seen have all been pushed out to, the, to our customers. We've got to show them the sort of the improvements that we're making and how we'd like them to, to use and access our service. Um, it's made it more accessible. And, and also we've, you know, we, we want to be a trusted, more open, more accessible service. Um, this next video is, is, is a, a, one of a suite of videos that we said um, we want people to meet our team. Um, and see what, I, what our, our teams do, what, what their backgrounds are, and just to inspire people to be more active more often. So I'll just show you this quick one, this video. This is the last video of the, the presentation. So my name's Claire, and I have been working for Fitcom specifically for... So my name's Claire, Claire now. and I have to been that, I work with um, a dental practice manager. So massive lifestyle change. As a dental practice manager, I met somebody who was a patient of ours and she suggested that I came along to one of her classes and half the practice came with me. We came along and we experienced Zumba for the first time. Absolutely loved it. It was a blast. And then another instructor was covering her one day and she said, do you know what you should do this? now? Apologies, be with me a second. Technology is always great when it works. So my name's Claire and I have been working for Fitcom specifically for, I think it's about a decade now. Prior to that, I was um, a dental practice manager, so massive lifestyle change. As a dental practice manager, I met somebody who was a patient of ours and she suggested that I came along to one of her classes and half the practice came with me. We came along and we experienced Zumba for the first time. Absolutely loved it. It was a blast. And then another instructor was covering her one day and she said, do you know what, you should do this. You should teach this. And then the leisure centre was looking for another instructor and I got dragged along and uh, very lucky, got the role. After that, I trained for my ETM, which is exercise to music qualification. I got that and started teaching officially for the council in 2012 and very quickly left behind my day job and just love to dance about for a living now. I've got a number of licenses, so I'm a licensed Zumba instructor, Zumba Gold, which is for older adults, Zumba Toning um, and Pound Fit as well, which is a cardio jam session. But I've also got my AFA, um, which is American Fitness and Athletics Association qualification as well, so that covers me worldwide. So I teach on a Monday night for John Bright's Leisure Centre, Monday night at six o'clock, bookable through Fit Conway. I am really passionate about what I do um, because of the change that I see in the people that come to classes. I've had people actually be emotional about the change that comes over them when they get to do what we do. I think music is a huge part of that. I only teach fitness classes that are music centric. Um, Music is the strongest form of magic, Marilyn Manson very famously said, and I truly believe that to be the case. And I think you can be free in, in a dance fitness environment. Um, I make sure the choreo is pretty easy to follow. So it's all about the music, it's all about moving and having fun and just letting everything go. Uh, leave it all at the door. Hopefully they don't even pick it up on their way out.
so that shows, I suppose, it, it, it backs up to Councillor Charlie's um, point before around um, more people, more active, solving the problem. Um, and that's the kind of instructor that we employ. Um, if, you have, if you've seen the video, you can see the, the type of people that were involved in that classes. It's all shapes and sizes. It's just people having fun, moving more, um, and obviously helping them in their sort of daily life stresses for, for, for dealing with um, what life throws at them, being them more, making them more resilient, et cetera. So a um, couple of quick slides and then we're done. Um, so mentioned the app a few times today. Uh, current downloads are seven and a half thousand. Um, downloads, which is a fantastic number. And um, we've actually set ourselves a target of 10,000 downloads by the end of this financial year. Uh, so the modules open, um, if you'd seen on the video, each of the, the tiles that sent essentially are called a module. Um, so over the last two weeks, our our app has been, um, each tile has been, or a tile has been opened over 46,000 times, which is a very good stat in terms of the usage of, of the app and how it's been um, being taken to by the public. Um, if you look at the pie graph, um, we've got um, so, so the top five centres for downloads. Um, I've included this because it's it's quite a good statistic. So the app is basically designed. There's an English version for each site and a Welsh version for each site. Obviously, Colwyn is our biggest site, has the most users, um, so it has the most downloads. But the interesting one there is the Canolf and Hamlin Colwyn, which is the Welsh version, uh, which has also been downloaded. It's in the top five. So Welsh language um, obviously is being catered for and it's getting used as well, which is really, really good. Um, moving on to the social media stats. So we've got um, 4,668 followers on social media and our reach is 37,170 people. So we're looking at increasing that as a target to over 5,000 follows and getting the reach up on a regular basis to about 50,000 if we can. Um, and then obviously Instagram, um, we're 865 follows. Uh, we want to get that over 1,000 by, by the end of this financial year. And that's it, the improvement in that allows us then to communicate more more frequently um, to a larger reach um, when we're doing our videos and when we're doing our communication with the public. They make sure that they get to understand, they get to know what's actually happening. Um, service investments we've talked about, and this is a really important part of, of the support we get from you guys, um, fit for purpose buildings, changes we're making in our service to, to make it um, more sustainable, as, as Anne meant, Council Anne mentioned before. So we've moved the equipment into main sports halls um, for social distance measures and for reassurance. This is really, really important because if people aren't reassured that we're safe, they won't come back. So that's part of the sustainability. Um, we've invested new equipment in Llandedno Junction um, over the, the last um, six months we've started as part of the, one of the capital um, bids we were successful for. This is where our commercial offer is going to really go toe to toe with other commercial offers within the county. And we're working on a refurbishment plan for Abigail, which will happen in the next six months. The picture you can see there is, is the, um, the squash courts being turned into a larger fitness space. Um, fit, the fitness class um, scenario at the minute is, is one of our biggest challenges because we've actually we're, we're, we've got such a huge demand for this. Um, a lot of people will come to our facilities purely because of the social aspect of it, working out with people, like-minded people to the, to, to the type of class that they enjoy doing. So this is really, really important to us. And that's why these investments are critical to, a, to our sustainability moving forward. Fit for purpose facilities is something that is really, really a priority for us. Um, so other sort of service investments, sp spinning bikes, like I mentioned before, um, we, we'd managed to um, fund this through our revenue budget last year. The e-bikes, this is part of our um, community development service. Um, so um, leisure development go into the communities offering different services. So just a quick video in here of, of people enjoying the bikes out in the woods. Um, so we're not just doing stuff in our facilities. You know, we're going out into the communities and, and doing our bit there too. Um, so, yes. As part of, you know, we're spending quite a lot of money in terms of the, the development of our facilities and obviously the, the repair and maintenance issues that we face. So we're working closely with facilities management from ERF. Uh, they're really supportive. Um, you know, they, they, they're massively involved with us in terms of delivering um, the, the, the repair and maintenance projects that we need. It's been the project's been managed under the, the framework um, and we've just managed to secure funding internally from our revenue budget to um, to, to pay for a new timing system for Flandin the Swim Centre. It's about £70,000. 
Um, it's a regional pool. It needs to have this, this piece of technology. Um, we're actually quite lucky enough that we can do it from within our revenue budget. Um, again, sustainability moving forward. We've got a regional pool. It has to act like a regional pool and have the technology that a regional pool should have. So, um, you know, we've, we've, been, we've been really keen to, to solve this problem for, for that facility because it's one of our key facilities within Conway. It's the biggest pool we've got. It's, it, it, it's a, as a regional pool, you know, we work quite closely with Swim Wales. Um, we're, we're looking now we can take some, some more regional and national events, short course events um, over the next 12 months. Um, so what's next for us? Um, mentioned before, socioeconomic review, uh, uniform as part of our brand, um, that'll be in place um, in early 2022, um, presumably just finalising the details on that for us. Um, new swimming lesson application, uh, Learn2, that was ready pre-pandemic, but because of the pandemic, we've had to, had to park it for the time being, so that now there's a demand for swimming lessons. We're working on that. Uh, we're going to continue with the repair and uh, maintenance investments, facility upgrades, contact centre full-time, and investment in uh, more technology for safeguarding purposes. So the picture you can see on the screen there are obviously access barriers that, that ensure that um, children, vulnerable people, from people who shouldn't be in the list. So um, I suppose it goes back to any further questions. Thank you. Uh, um, I've got uh, Councillor Abdul Khan and then Councillor Gronwy Edwards. Abdul. Oh, thank, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just a quick question about the, obviously the online booking is, this seems to be very popular. I was wondering, we, as you know, we get a lot of referral exercise, uh, people, senior citizen people go into the uh, gym and so forth. Uh, for swimming. I wonder if we can have any, uh, maybe next time to see how, what's the percentage of them going on to online? Because things I often hear as a customer now, that people, you know, we might not get the freedom we had in past where you just walk in uh, and then came pandemic and when we did open, it was booking only. A, have we gone in back to walking and booking? And also, uh, would you be able to give us the figure of the our senior citizens uh, booking online for next time? And just finally, as you know, I supply squash uh, a lot, and we lost two two of our court in Colon Bay Ledger Centre. And then now you're saying, and since the since the closure of the squash court, the, the guys I used to play, they're going to Rose and say squash court now. And if you're closing in junction, uh, or if you're proposing to close the junction one, uh, are we not only really likely to lose more custom? Mali, would you like to come back on that, please? I'll go through those questions um, one by one. So yeah. um, the National Exercise Referral Scheme has, has just restarted. Um, the way that, 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 that we actually engage with this group is slightly different. Um, we engage them by phone. So we've got a team of people will actually engage with them and actually book them into sessions. Longer term, um, statistics pre-pandemic were one in every four people on our membership were part of the NERS program, um, National Exercise Referral Program at some stage. So this, this program is quite key to us. So the, the, the actual transition from that group into what we determine as a normal user, as part of that progress and that transition, they will be I suppose shown the technology that we've that we've got in place and how to use it, so they they they're actually more self sufficient on their own. So that's the news. Um, senior citizens, yes, we can we can break down the data to get um, the, the, the the statistic that you're after around how many senior citizens use the, the online booking, etc. Um, again, I think you know we don't do the silver surface enough justice these days. I think they, a lot of people are using it, but I'm I'm definitely happy to get that that statistic for you. Um, and finally, squash. Um, so. We still have um, courts available in John Bright and in San Roost. So we've got a, a set of courts available on the coast and um, in rurally down in San Roost as well. And we are actually in conversation with um, Le Sport in Roseland Sea. Squash numbers are dwindling. Um, it, it, it is a shame, but it's just it's a fact of life of, 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 of the current squash numbers within Conway. So we're actually actively engaging with um, Le Sport to make sure that any of the squash players who 
did use Junction, have got an outlet and a, and a place to go to, to to continue with the sport. So um, we 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 were aware that there would be displacement. We did an equalities impact assessment on on that decision, and we've we've had, we have actually engaged with a private provider to make sure that that service is available for for our older customers, if you like. Are you happy, Abdul? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, well, um, can you meet with our Kingori Grand Wedwards? Will we have been trusted that sir? Uh, with your strategical Jane Richardson. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I wonder if the members would mind if I just, in the two or three minutes, covered the questions that Anne, Councillor Anne, had raised prior to um, the presentation around the commercial model that we're using. And others will pick up on what, what Molly was saying, but I did want to kind of really emphasise um, the way in which we are making the model more financially sustainable and commercially sustainable. So I think your question um, was, was around what is the new model? And I, I think I would say it's not a new model. It is a complete transformation of the old model. So I, I, there are three main ways in which we are becoming more financially sustainable and more commercially minded, if you like, from, from that finance perspective. The first is through much greater efficiency in the way that we run. Um, and in terms of, of that area, the, the massive change is in our use of, man use of management information. Now, we haven't particularly shown that to you today, but what we're doing behind the scenes is that we now have dashboards for all sorts of metrics that we're measuring um, in terms of the financial health of this side of the business. Um, that information is then used to drive decisions on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So one of the examples of that is around the constant monitoring of fitness class numbers, levels, where is their demand, where are we oversubscribed, where are we undersubscribed, and then the team, um, through a new structure, are able to use the information to make sure we are adjusting the timetable so that we are putting on exactly what people need, so we get the numbers through and the money through that, that is attached to those. Um, and that's all being led by one of our colleagues, Paul Francis, who's in this new role now, fitness manager, so we've done a restructure to enable people to operate in this new way, and that, that's one of the roles that we've created. Um, I think the other thing that we're, we're looking at is um, uh, using the staff much more flexibly. So before people were in very siloed roles and now we're being more efficient in the way that we use staff throughout the building. So people have been trained up to be able to lead a class, but also cover the desk, etc. So we can be much more efficient in how we manage staff rotors. So always using data management information um, in a very targeted day to day way that we can spend money as efficiently as possible. So that's, that's the first strand is around efficiency. Um, and Mali reports back to me each month on how that's going. Um, and the reason I then ask the questions about, well, are you sure you're about this and that and the other? The two other areas are around recruiting and retaining people into the gym, particularly through memberships. And this has been a massive transformation. Before we sat on a membership scheme that was just trotted along and it wasn't the bread and butter of everybody's daily life. I came from a membership organization, um, National Trust, where we lived and died by our membership and people would watch it like hawks. And that's the, that's the culture that we now have in this service. So we've made it much easier and more attractive to join as members. And um, so you've seen some things like this, join online. Um, we, we've invested in facilities to attract people to join. We've, we've introduced new membership categories. So we now have junior memberships. So if you Conway gyms, you can belong as, as teenagers, 13, 14 year old, I believe, Mally. Um, other gyms, you couldn't do that. And, and the, the, the membership is subsidized, um, or it's at a lower rate for those people, but they can come along with dad, with a friend, a, a role model, whatever. So we've now got a whole new bunch of people joining that couldn't before. And so big focus on recruitment through campaigns, using social media, we're very proactive now. But the biggest win and the biggest change of all is the focus on retention. And before, we just didn't. Um, bust a gut to make sure that people once they joined stayed joining we, we gave all sorts of reasons and opportunities for people to come out of the scheme and we focus more on well can we get more people in the biggest win is to retain your members and this is where Mali and the team have completely and utterly turned on its head the way that we work the first thing they did was put in a customer um, care program to understand what do people want from their membership they then produced different membership programs. That means that when you come in, you get given a program that suits you and then you can follow that through. And then we use nudge theory where, where people are dropping off because we're looking at the management information. We can see when people aren't coming anymore. They then get a nudge. They can get moved onto a tweaked program, the next stage of a program. So all that nudge theory is, is driving the decision making every day about watching where we, we might lose people, and making sure we keep them on board. 
That also then feeds into the app and the website, making the offer much more personalized so people can be in charge of their fitness journey. All of that as well is giving us further management information, again, to help with, with the recruitment. Um, we're using new technology in the facilities that people can, if you're on a bike, it's telling you things about your body performance and, and, and giving you statistics about your own well-being and your body mass, et cetera, so that you can see your own journey, which again helps with recruit with retaining people because people can physically see the, the progress that they're making. So all of these things, the virtual classes that maybe you can't join for a while, you're away with work or whatever, you can join wherever you are. All of these things that Mally has talked about are part of this transformed commercial model, which is more efficient, driving more income and retaining people for longer. The challenge we've got is that I would love to show you the spreadsheet that says here it was in 2019 and here it is today in September 2021, but it doesn't make any sense because of what happened in COVID. We were closed for so long. It's taken us such a long while to be able to fully open. And there are two cohorts of members um, in terms of um, when we closed for COVID, there were the members who once we opened were very confident to come back. They were desperate to get back in the gym. And then there's this more cautious cohort who are much more worried about socialising and they are proving to be slightly slower to come back. And therefore, the membership numbers that we've got now, even though we've recruited another five, six hundred completely new the membership numbers, look like they're a bit lower than they were because we still haven't got everybody back because of these people who are cautious at the moment while we've still got social distancing, etc. in place. Once we've got another full year of figures in a normal year, I think you will see just what a massive transformation this has been. I hope that helps in terms of the, the commercial side. Yeah, hello, Jane. Do you have in the King Horry Cromwell at what's what an amanet get him to the back? Do you have in the King Horry and McCaffrey? Come on. I think it's Gromley before me. Yes, but I've just explained. I've just asked Councillor Gromley because, because Jane was answering specific questions of yours. Right, okay, I think it's only fair that you should have a go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is yeah. that all right with you? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Oh, well it's, done. I'm happy. Absolutely. Um, love getting my questions answered. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd like to just say, first of all, I'm blown away, Mally, by what you've done in terms of the whole call the marketing thing, the use of IT and the sort of emerging offer. So, you know, I, I just like to put any sort of questions that I ask about the financial model and the sustainability of the service in the context. I can see that you're working really hard to try and um, react and respond to the population of Conway, all 117,000 of them um, who've all got different needs and so on. So, you know, your presentation today is, is really sort of clear about that. And I thank Jane for her intervention because um, I think Jane knows the way I think um, and I think it's actually understanding what the model looks like um, as opposed to just a narrative journey really um, because this is obviously a financial scrutiny as well as an economic sort of scrutiny committee and it's really important that we we focus in in terms of what 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 the, the finance is all about so I really welcome Jane's analysis of of the model as she sees it and I can understand that at this point in time, you've probably got skewed data all over the place just because of the pandemic and that we're obviously still in the middle of. So I, th I thank you for that, Jane. Uh, and obviously that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so thanks. I think probably the one thing that I would maybe just ask us to do, I mean, we, we've hinted a lot, and I'm really encouraged by what you say in terms of data analytics, um, Jane, because I know you hear me banging on about data analytics all the time. I don't think we see enough information on which to make base our decisions. And again, I was pleased to see that Welsh Audit Office um, endorsed that in terms of their recommendations a couple of years ago. So what I would probably like to propose is that perhaps report back here, as well as the recommendation that's there, I'd like to make another recommendation that before the end of this council term, 
by April 2022, perhaps the financial bit, um, skewed or not, that we actually get to see some of the numbers that are around what the funding gap is and how we're, we're, we're proposing to make affordability um, and, and all the work that we're doing into sort of the longer term. I mean, I assume you've, you've got a financial plan and you'll have a funding gap for now, probably a funding gap for the next three to five years. Um, so I'd actually like to see some sort of information on that, that back up the direction of travel which is I think the words that are used in, in the sort of first proposal. I mean I, I think looking at the Welsh audit recommendations I don't know if there's been an internal audit report that gives you assurance but I know we've got obviously the audit committee to look at that because you know it would appear that, that again is equally up in the air just again for, for all the reasons we've just talked about. So you know a big well done from me but I'd actually like us to see some some data and some financials that says the model that we now appear to have, have started to work on and be implementing is actually running through. And therefore, when it comes to operating within limited finances, that, you know, we're generating the income or we have a plan to do it. And this is how, you know, it's trending. So um, that, that's a recommendation for me. But thanks, Jane. And certainly thanks, Mally. Well, and I take, I take it, therefore, you're making an amended proposal. Anne? I didn't hear you. Sorry, yeah. I, ta I take it you're making an amended proposal. Or indeed, or indeed, you know, a, a second proposal, because I think the first one basically says, just note what we're, we're saying. Okay. My, my second proposal would be that we have a report back in April 2022, not further narrative, more about the financials and the analytics that back up the, the model and the financial strategy that, that we're starting to work on. OK, thank you. Um, Jane, do you want to come back or are you happy? Absolutely, thank you, Austin. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for letting me ask a question. I'm not on the committee. But uh, my question is probably far more simple than uh, wanting to know about data and analytics and income. It's about the direction of travel in particular. There seems to be a lot of uh, discussion about high tech um, and massive amounts of investment in equipment uh, and in um, in that path. But my concern is our question is, uh, having visited various by a couple of times over the last few months for meetings rather than fitness, unfortunately, is that the spaces that I call low tech spaces for people that want to play five a side netball. Uh, indoor hockey uh, and things of this nature and even actually that used to happen in the sports hall in areas because the place now I've, seems to be all uh, the um, the equipment the uh, the the running gears the fitness gears and all this stuff is that squeezing out the low tech sports such as five a side uh, and all these things that happen indoors during as winter approaches during the winter months when just a space where you can have these simple, uh, low equipment sports. Are we losing those at the expense of concentrating totally on gym equipment uh, and things of that nature? Because, you know, I'm unfortunately not as fit by, as I should be by any means, but the simple things sometimes are just as effective as uh, the high tech equipment. That's just the question. Are we losing that uh, space for the low tech sports? Mali, do you want to come back on that? Yes, thank you very much. Um, thanks, Cromwell. Um, So as part of the equality impact assessments we carried out at the start of the pandemic to make certain changes, obviously what you mentioned there is moving the equipment into the main halls. Um, as part of that um, equality impact assessment, we did uh, an assessment on uh, movement of bookings. Um, we've got obviously other sites with main halls across the whole of the county. Um, and a lot of them um, were slightly underused. Um, so for me, it was more a matter of we were we have more facilities and the demand wasn't there. So by by doing what we've done, we've now created a demand in other sites. So in particular, um, we've got the tennis centre in Arius. 
which is a covered facility that we are now looking to potentially turn into a multi-sport facility, which is now taking on um, badminton. So badminton that used to be played in in the, the main sports hall in Colwyn is now happening in the tennis centre. The tennis centre is busier. Um, financially, we're better off because we've got more members coming back in and we've got obviously more people um, accessing um, the facilities that, that would have done previously. Um, they're just doing it in a slightly different space. Um, so we've got smaller sites locally like um, Muscular Craving, um, sports halls in John Bright's um, and predominantly the, the, the PFI, the school sites, Abercornway, et cetera. So what we've done is we, we, we've looked at the bigger picture of our programming um, and allowed um, certain movements to happen to make us more commercially viable and uh, to make sure that the smaller sites are, are actually used them a little bit more as well. Thank, thank you. If I can just come back in the uh, 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 chair. Yes, yeah, scrum me. Um, no problem. That, as I said, the lack of the larger open indoor spaces for the the simpler type of sports i know uh, mary's mentioned places like crazy and the like but they are, they are limited uh, and uh, certainly the pfi schools from what, what i understand the uh, opportunities for the general public to use some of those facilities is not always easy but certainly um it's not a criticism i just i'm concerned about you know losing spaces for those low-tech sports that are still a demand for i think because obviously yeah. lockdown meant that Many people couldn't take part in those sports in any case, but thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Right. Um, I think I read Don Mill. Thank you, Chair. Um, at this point, Councillor Don, would you mind turning your would you mind turning your video off? I will Don's do that. A bit finished. I'm with you. Yeah. Nothing personal, Don. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Just make sure you're more comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, th thanks, Molly. I, I, I must admit I've had quite a bit of good feedback from people on uh, the facilities we offer compared to facilities they've seen elsewhere, um, in particular from one person who involves himself very heavily into triathlons and even Ironman jobs. So, you know, if the facilities are matching those kind of people, uh, then the public are certainly well catered for. Um, I'm putting on here slightly hat of a another committee I'm on, namely Governance and Audit, um, and a little bit down the financial plan, but moving along from that, um, I'm assuming that we do have uh, a budget for each of our separate sites and therefore can evaluate the effectiveness of them on a financial basis. Uh, clearly, uh, the report on page 26 from the, uh, of our pack today um, from the audit office makes reference to the lack of a clear financial model impacting on long-term sustainability of the service. And I think we've already discussed the need of the financial model. I won't say any more on that. Uh, what I will say is that it's this long-term sustainability. I know we had requests for um, uh, funding through capital bids um, on a regular basis, and you've already, I think, mentioned today about how capital bids has helped sustain us and uh, develop and maintain uh, our facilities. Um, what I am wondering is that does each site actually have an annual maintenance plan, uh, in particular uh, looking at the equipment, because clearly this is very costly equipment, it does wear and need replacing. So do we have a maintenance plan on that, uh, as well as the buildings, which have had a lot of requests for capital? Um, do we have a short or medium term preventative maintenance operation plan? Um, and have we also got in place long term plan for major projects so that if we can put all these three areas together, we can review going forward so that when we're looking at um, repaying any loans that say are needed, that we have in place uh, the ability for the revenue to afford those loans. Um, because I see this particular need for a uh, really a medium term overall plan within the service as being a necessary element for what we were discussing recently at the last governance and audit committee, 
namely the need for the council, as requested by uh, the Welsh Audit Office, to have a medium term financial plan. So we need each service feeding in, I would think, and to have that prepared. Um, I haven't had that feeling when looking at the uh, capital bids that came in last year um, and capital bids that come in since last year's round in the autumn. And of course, I assume we'll be having more capital bids coming in uh, for the round this what, November time. Uh, so could you please sort of clarify some of those points? Thank you. Mali. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Councillor Don. Um, so we obviously each of our sites have a budget um, that creates the leisure services budget um, in its entirety. Um, we we are audited um, internally on a on an annual basis. I think the the plan this year, I think Abigail is, is due for for its audit. Um, in terms of um, sort of maintenance on equipment, so our, our fitness equipment is probably our biggest expense. So um, the the contract we have with our supplier um, that. There is a maintenance program attached to that, and the the actual plan is to um, to change the equipment on a seven year cycle. Um, so um, our payment re uh, restructured around seven years, and then we just enter into a new agreement with them based on any technological advances that we we decide that we want to introduce onto the new kit. So kit wise, that's covered. Um, maintenance wise, um, obviously working with um, ERF facilities management. Um, they've they've um, created a, a condition survey for all of our sites um, that has short term, which is basically immediate um, work that needs doing, medium term and long term as well. So capital bid went to in um, last year for this year, uh, 1.2 million's worth um, in terms of facilities investments. Um, that's ongoing. Um, that does leave a shortfall of about 1.5, which is will be submitted as part of capital bid for leisure this year. So we're actually trying to tackle long term in two years to give us the status quo of of then providing the plan, the strategic plan around finances and working with Steve Seal in ERF facilities management on a longer term strategy around facility maintenance um, and, and obviously entering into a service level agreement with them to make sure that that is, is, is maintained to a standard that, that our customers and our residents deserve. Dielke Mali, yeah. um, I can see yeah. Jane Richardson has got a hand up Don. So before you can pass, Jane might have something that's relevant to say. Jane. Thank you, Jane. Just in addition to what Mali said, members will remember that was it some months ago earlier this year we um, repurposed a fund that was in um, the former community development service in order to create an annual maintenance a revenue budget for leisure because there wasn't adequate provision for um, maintenance for our leisure facilities so that was something that, that members oversaw and agreed to some months ago which I think is going to make a big difference to the service against that concern you've raised Don. Don do you want to come back? Yeah, uh, thanks, Austin. Um, yes, I think um, what we're seeing here is what I was concerned about is that there's a certain degree of catch up that we're having to make. Uh, and these things are now being put into place, which is reassuring. Uh, and clearly uh, what we're doing, and I think uh, in this committee, um, we're, we're looking at be, being reassured uh, that this is actually working and uh, that we have sufficient to uh, deliver and solve these problems uh, and clearly from uh, an auditing point of view I'm concerned about the uh, the response that that is able to give then to the Welsh Audit Office's uh, report so thank you again for your response Mally and thanks Jane as well. Okay, diolch yn fawr. Um, right, cyn horyw yn Jones a diolch yn fawr yn amyn Edgar wyn. Diolch yn fawr. Dau gwestiwn sydyn i'n ydy um... Mi fel un oedd yn arfer bod yn aelod o FIT Conwy tan yr er, er pandemig pen nath y cyngor stopio'n uh, aelodau thi. Dwi ddim yn cofio cael llawer o ebys gyda'r cyngor, ond ydych chi'r yn ebys drwan, ac yna'n bell un all llynedd, ond dwi'n cael dim llawer o ebys nath goffa fi i ail emelodi, a dwi'n siŵr ydyn ar rhywbeth bwriadol neu GDPR neu, neu beth bynnag. Dim modd i mynd i'r llawer, mae cael un person yn tîm yn dweud hefyd mae'n dengau yn pwysau yn hendigon heb gael y cyngor yn anfon ebyst yn atgoffa fi hefyd. Ond jyst gwestiwn ystod iawn fwriadol neu dweud i llithro drwy'r er, rhwyd drwsyd. A'r cwestiwn arall ydy mae'n a sôn wedi bod um, am symud pwll nofio Llanrwst ydy hynny dal yr y gweill neu 
Es lo que era el tipo de área tiene que ser un tipo de una sujeta. Sí, Juan. Councilor, sorry, Mali. You're not a councillor yet, but you might be in the so, future. Uh, Councillor Wynn, thanks um, for your questions. Um, firstly, I'll, I'll need to double check that uh, your contact information is right. And obviously, we have to um, comply with quite stringent um, GDPR information. So we'll, I'll need to double check that in case that's what's causing you not to receive emails and our chosen method of communication. So I'll go back to the team, ask them to check that out. Um, and in terms of information, we've given updates to people who have been on the long freeze. Um, about inf about sort of updates that we're doing throughout the service. Um, Jane mentioned that cohort earlier on is that we are now starting to communicate with them over the next few weeks because their memberships will be unfrozen. Um, we need to give ourselves um, the, the data on our benchmark of where we're actually at because we've got about 1,300 people still sat um, on this freeze. Um, so um, that information will start to go out, like I said, in the next couple of weeks. So you may may receive an email at that point, if you're still on that freeze. Um, I think from our point of view is we, we try to give um, information, but not kind of bombard people with emails. Um, no one likes getting spammed by emails. Um, so it's, it's, that balance is, is, is quite a difficult one to get right. Um, but we'll double check that one for you and come back to you. Um, in terms of the, the, the pool in Slanroost, um, as part of the maintenance program, um, the facility booking sheets, um, uh, condition surveys that ERF have done for us, um, we're working on a programme of probably another 10 years worth of maintenance on that facility. Um, I think over that period of time, then we'll look at um, the, any potential movement of that in a more strategic manner. Um, and that information will obviously be coming to, um, to, to you as members for, for, for guidance on. Win, Don't do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, Councillor Abdul. Councillor Abdul. Thank, thank you, Chair. Just want some clarity from Councillor Anne, really, because the recommendation that I propose that we accept says on 2.1 that this report is accepted as a defined response to the COVID pandemic and a clear direction to address the WAA report demonstrated how the Council's Ledger service have invested in initiative ways and developed a clearly sustainability plan for the future future benefit of Conway residents through capital grant revenue and funded project. Now we in this recommend uh, the recommendation. I think the officers have put for us is to really address what the auditor general is found in his examination. So I can't see us omitting that and having new proposal, uh, which uh, Councillor Anne has proposed. I can see that, yes, we do need uh, probably a uh, report back before uh, the end, uh, end of the financial year. Maybe if she can add it and simplify it so that we can have a report back, but I can't, you know, I don't think her uh, recommendation has uh, been uh, seconded, but I'm quite happy to accept her slight amendment, but I can't see us omitting that and putting a new recommendation, Chair. Just a clarity from Councillor okay. Anne. Okay, Councillor Anne, clarify, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I mean, <laughs> My, my recommendation, I thought, was quite clear, really. And I think it's we haven't had any sort of financials or data, the evidence that we've got a long term financial model that gives sustain, it ensures sustainability of the service. So we've now got more clarity on our, our, our thinking. I think in the report, it says the direction of travel. So, you know, in terms of getting assurance as a, as a scrutiny committee that we've got a much but the beginnings of a model that's going to be deliverable and successful, I think it's it's wise and sensible to have a report that's backed up, think backing up the model as Jane's described it with financials and data. Um, so that's that's the difference, I think, in terms of from from the recommendation that's already there. And I think probably this is an addition because I see the recommendation is fine for for two one. But I think this would be a supplementary recommendation for me. I, I, 
I un understood from you uh, earlier on, Councillor Anne, that what you were making was a second proposal. Yeah, that's right. Yes. That's right. Right. Abdul, is that uh, clarification enough for you? Yeah, so we state the recommendation and add on powers. No, what it is, no, and, and, and is separate. It's a second proposal. Second. And if we receive a seconder for Anne's proposal, then we go... We, we, we will vote on both together, okay? Okay. Is, is that all right, Abdul? Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay, yeah. Thank okay. Thank you for the clarity. You're welcome. Um, Councillor Nigel Smith. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I was just going to point out I would struggle to add Councillor Zan's proposal to the recommendation. I think, uh, you know, bearing in mind that we're not out of the pandemic yet, but for basically 18 months, there's been no financial or data collected. Um, it's going to give a poor image back, you know, if it was to come forward in April as a report. So uh, I couldn't uh, I couldn't support that recommendation. Oh, OK. You, right. Um, I have Councillor Louise Emery, uh, who's waiting to speak. But before I allow her to speak, I shall ask now, is there anybody willing to second Councillor Anne McCaffrey's Separate proposal, second proposal, sorry. Councillor Don Milne, I take it? Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Right, Councillor Louise. Thank you. I thought it would be remiss of me if I didn't say something as the portfolio holder for leisure. Uh, That's and it's fine. been fantastic having 90 minutes of discussion about... Um, the service. Yes, it has been 90 minutes, so be short, please. Thank yes, you. exactly. So <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, I, I really appreciate members' interest in this. And, and you can clearly see, you know, we've got full support from the members and obviously full support from myself and the Cabinet. So I'm not going to say much more. But if I don't say anything, people will wonder where I've been. Fascinating discussion. We're going in the right direction. And, you know, I look forward to bringing uh, even more positive news about leisure to you in the future. Thank you. Dear Louise, thank you for being concise and to the point. Thank you. Um, iawn, Sally, uh, mae gen ni ddau um, gen ni gyfiawn, so over to you. There's two proposals and we're going to vote yeah. on both. So the first proposal um, we can take as a show of hands. Have we had a seconder for the first proposal? Yes, we did. Okie dokie. Yeah, so the first proposal, which is in the report. So if we can have a show of hands for that one, please. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then the second proposal, as it's an amendment, um, so it's to add an additional proposal, I will uh, do a roll call. So for, against or abstain, Councillor Phil Capper. Against. Councillor Jeff Corrie. Against. Councillor Sam Cotton. Against. Councillor Pauline Heap-Williams. Against. Councillor Pat Hebron. Councillor Pat Hebron. You muted, Pat. Sorry, sorry, obliged. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Councillor Andrew Hinchliffe. Paul. Councillor Chris Hughes. Paul. Councillor Ian Jenkins. Councillor Ian Jenkins. No, I don't think he's here anymore. Okay. Councillor Abdul Khan. Against. Councillor Peter Lewis. For. Councillor Anne McCaffrey. For. Councillor Don Milne. For. Councillor Dave Rees. Against. Councillor Austin Roberts. Uh, Oblight. Councillor Michael Smith. For. Councillor Nigel Smith. Another event. Councillor Joan Vaughan. Four. And Councillor Adam Wynne. Oblige. Okay, just bear with me a second while I count up those numbers. Yeah, so I have 10 in favour and eight against, so that's carried, Chair. Yeah, um, Councillor Jeff Corrie. Against. Councillor Pat Hebron. Against. Councillor Andrew Hinchliffe. For. 
fod yn bresennol ac i cymryd rhan yn y sgwrs difyr. Yn wedig gaeddi o'ch i'r ddau gyfieithydd ffion ac eto am ei gwasanaeth ac diolch arbennig iawn i'r tîm yma ym Modlon Debsef, Sali, wrth fe ochr i mynyn a Dawn. Felly gaeddi mynd o pnawn da i chi gyd a diolch yn fawr.